The humans are coming. We just have to hold till they get here. At least, that is what Command said weeks ago. Not that it matters now, as Command was overrun not long after, along with the capital. The humans will not come, Dax thought, as another shell impacted near her dugout bunker, not when their worlds are under siege by the hive as well. Dax opened her right breast pocket and pulled out a picture of her daughter, a happier time, before the war when there was a reason to smile. The shelling had stopped, Dax realised, after a moment, and put her memories of the past away. The hive of scum only stopped shelling when another wave was ready. As Dax got up and grabbed her rifle, and looked at her fellow soldiers, police and militia, some not much older than her daughter, some with too much grey in their coats, taking a moment to thank the gods that her own cub was still young enough that she was with the other children in the city's subterranean shelter, pushing away the knowledge that it would not make any difference if the Hiver break through the line, when they break through. The siren sounded through the eerie silence, signalling another wave was on its way, as everyone made for the battlements. Dax could hear a soldier nearby praying for salvation. She aimed her rifle at the horizon. Not long now, Dax muttered to herself, as the ground started to shake. Soon after in the distance from horizon to horizon, a seemingly endless wave of warrior cast hivers came into view. This was it, she knew in her gut. Their death was at paw. The fur on her neck stood on end as the long guns charged and fired at the wall of death storming their way, burning a path of destruction in the wake of the beams, but doing little to stem the tide. AA batteries fired flak and what missiles they had left at the low flying winged type high warriors. Then as the horde came closer and into the minefield, loud booms could be heard as they detonated, sending great plumes of earth, dust and hivers into the heavens, eating away their numbers by the tens of thousands. But still they came. Fire! came the order, as death itself closed in. Dax let out a war cry at the top of her lungs, as she and everyone else let loose near a blinding amount of tracers and laser fire, stopping the charge, but only for a moment, before the hivers climbed over their dead and dying, only to join them, creating an ever higher hill rolling towards the four trenches. Dax's rifle began to glow red, as she saw the flamers nearby unleash a firestorm upon the tide of death, but too little too late, as the hive was upon them, and now in their midst. A hive warrior came crashing into the trench on top of the pious soldier next to her. He screamed, as his maw tore him asunder. It turned towards her, screeching as it charged. Dax shifted her aim, still holding down the trigger, only for it to fail, finally succumbing to the overuse. She barely had time to shift her grip, holding the stock in one paw and the glowing barrel in the other, ignoring the burning pain and shoving it into the ravenous moor as she was pushed into the ground by the weight and force of the hiver crashing into her. With it atop her, still trying to end her as the barrel burned it sure of his victory to come over his smaller foe. But fortune is a fickle bitch, and rifle stock was now braced on the wall of the trench, freeing Dax's good paw, allowing for her to draw her knife and sink it deep in between the chitin plates at the base of the warrior's skull. Dax screamed in rage as the warrior went slack like a marionette with his strings cut. Rolling out from under his carcass and taking a new rifle from a fallen comrade, she took a moment to look upon the carnage before renewing her fire. The horde was thinning now, but so too were they. Dax continued firing until she heard a disgusting clicking sound behind her. Whipping around to see a hive warrior with his lower jaw shot off, rushing forward, intent on running her through with his sharp front legs. No time to fire, Dax bayoneted his left eye cluster as the warrior's front legs came stabbing down into her own leg, pinning her to the trench wall and the other cutting deep into Dax's gut. She screamed in rage and pain as she leaned forward, taking the warrior by surprise as Dax bit his neck using her tusks to rip apart an opening in his chitin. In blind fury, she spat out the chitin plate and tore greedily into the warrior's flesh, taking pleasure in his suffering until it died. By the time a thoroughly exhausted and gravely wounded Dax freed herself, the fighting had died down to a few struggling warriors. Somehow, against all hope, they had managed to repel the wave. Bleeding profusely, Dax listened to the few survivors as they either cheered or cried for the fallen. She fell down, leaning against the trench wall, trying to stay awake. Now having the time to look at her wound, she came to realise she was a dead woman, only alive by the battle rage and adrenaline. 
Dax's guts were in ruins as her blood flowed freely down her tattered armour. Reaching into her breast pocket, she pulled out the picture of her daughter, praying one last time to the gods to look out for Cup, when she felt the earth shake once more, and sirens sound again. Another wave was coming, and there was far too few to stop it. Dragging herself back to the firing line, her strength was failing her now, but Dax was determined to take more hivers with her, aiming her battered rifle back at the horizon, when suddenly there was a flash of light. The clouds parting before a massive explosion turned the horizon into a sea of blinding fire, dust and death. As her sight returned, Dax looked up to see balls of fire come crashing down through the clouds, followed by large chunks of hiver ships falling from the heavens. Soon, human drop pods followed. Dax smiled as the life left her eyes, for the humans had come, and her cub would be in good hands.